Hi Bobcats, in this video we're going to take a look at the pH scale. Our main objective with this part of the video is to simply describe the pH scale. Uh, in the follow-up video we'll do some actual calculations using pH. pH actually involves the concentration of hydrogen ions in a solution. And so I wanted to take a look at how we express the concentration of a solution. Uh, the most common unit that chemists use is called molarity. And this unit of molarity is abbreviated with a capital M. And the equation for finding molarity is to take the moles of solute and divide that by the total liters of solution. Now, the solute is whatever got dissolved in your solution. So whatever gets dissolved up is what we're going to call the, um, the solute. And then the solution represents that homogeneous mixture of a solute, the thing that got dissolved up, and the solvent the thing that did the dissolving very often, uh, particularly in um, uh, the 1000 level chemistry courses, the solvent will simply be water. Now this diagram down below represents the same solution made at two different concentrations. The solvent in this case is simply water and the solute is Allura red, um, which is also known as red dye number 40. And so the solution on the left has um, a high concentration because it's so dark. So uh, we call the, the solution on the left concentrated, whereas the solution on the right is what we would call diluted. Now, if we were to describe that in terms of the molarity, that solution on the left has a high molarity and the solution on the right has a low molarity. So it would be a big number for the molarity on the left compared to a small number for the molarity on the right. The pH scale is how we describe how acidic or how basic a solution is. I want to start talking about the scale right in the middle at a pH of 7, which is what we call a neutral solution. So a neutral solution, it's neither an acid nor a base. Um, it has a pH of 7. Now, anytime the pH gets below 7, we call that solution acidic. And so on this representation, it's all of the areas that are pink or red. Um, and Sometimes people say, oh, uh, an acid solution has a pH between 0 and 7 or between 1 and 7. That's actually not accurate. There is not a lower limit to pH. It's even possible to have negative values of pH. Just most commonly, and when water is your solvent, you'll tend to run into solutions that have a pH bigger than 0. But that's, that's definitely not a lower limit. So the safest thing for describing the pH of an acid solution is to simply say that it's below 7. For a base solution, that's all of those solutions that are shown in blue on this scale. And base solutions are those whose pH is bigger than 14. And I'd like to point out a couple of um, chemicals that are labeled up here. I'm going to start with this one that's farthest to the left, where it says one molar HCl. So the, a one molar acid solution has a pretty good concentration of hydrogen ions. So um, one of the things I'd like to label over here is that this side has a high concentration of H plus ions. And I'm going to introduce the notation here that square brackets around a chemical mean its concentration in terms of molarity. Now on the total opposite side of this equation or of this scale, we have one molar NaOH. So this is a fairly concentrated base solution. So over here, we're going to have a high concentration of hydroxide ions. And so once again, I'll put that hydroxide in square brackets to indicate its molarity. Now, when I was first learning about pH, I remember seeing this and thinking, okay, got it. Acid means H plus, base means, means OH minus. And then 
my mind was blown because I was shown something like this next figure. Now, when you look at this figure, uh, water is right there in the middle with that pH of seven, what we call a neutral solution. And look at that label on the very bottom. Down there on the very bottom, it says that in a neutral solution, the concentration of H plus ion equals the concentration of hydroxide ion. So you actually have both of these present in a neutral solution. In fact, in any water solution, you will have both H plus ions and OH minus ions. It's simply a property of water. Water undergoes this reaction um, that's referred to as its auto ionization. It means it does this all by itself. So water will break apart to give H plus ions and OH minus ions. So as long as you have water in your sample, you will also have a, at least a very small amount of H plus ions and OH minus ions. It's just a property of water. So if we have the same amount of H plus and OH minus, we say it's a neutral solution. However, let's say that the hydrogen ion concentration is greater than the hydroxide ion concentration. In that case, we'll say that the solution is acidic. And so there still is hydroxide ion present in an acid solution. I remember just being blown away by that. Um, on the opposite side of things, over here on the basic solution side, if your amount of hydroxide ion is greater than your amount of hydrogen ion, then we'll call it a base. But a base still has a trace of hydrogen ion in it. Um, that's just, just the nature of water. So let me add two more labels up here. Um, on that pH scale, we wrote on the far right that that's a high concentration of hydroxide ions, and, but there still will be a trace of H plus ions. And likewise, if we go down to low pHs, where we have a high concentration of H plus ions, we will still have a trace of hydroxide ions, even at very low pH. When I do this clicker question in a face-to-face -face class, I always like the discussions among students that it uh, creates. Um, what we're asking with this list of five chemicals is to rank these from the lowest pH to the highest pH. Now we'll start assembling our list down at the very bottom of the screen. So I just want to start by labeling down here. If we have a low pH, that means lots of H plus ions. Uh, and at the opposite end, if we have a high pH, that's going to mean that we have lots of hydroxide ions. So since we aren't given any numbers in this problem, so we can't calculate things. We're just told that these all have the same concentration. We need to figure out which one of these is going to give us the most H plus, and which one of these is going to give us the most OH minus, and see if we can kind of finagle everything that's in between. So let's go through and just kind of label these five chemicals as best we can. The first of the chemicals is water and water is simply going to be neutral. So I'm just going to say that that's going to be a pH of seven and that's going to be right in the middle. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and put that on our rank order down here at the bottom. Water is going to be our middle answer. Um, then HF, the fact that it starts with an H means that it's going to be an acid. And there's one other acid in this list. It's the other chemical that starts with an H. And so that's going to be HCl. So now if we're going to compare HF and HCl, go back to our previous presentation and look at what is a strong acid versus what's a weak acid. And the out of these two choices, the one that appears on the list of strong acids is HCl. HF is missing from that list, so by default, it must be a weak acid. Now here's where we've got to think a little bit. A strong acid means that every molecule completely dissociates. So when HCl hits water, we don't have HCl anymore. Instead, what we have is H plus ions 
and Cl minus ions. So every HCl breaks apart and we get the maximum amount, and try that again, we will get the maximum amount of H plus ions possible. But with HF, it's not quite so, so dramatic. Um, HF being a weak acid prefers to stick together in the HF form and only like one to 3% of it will ionize. So we'll only get one to 3% of the H plus ions that we get compared to uh, an HCl solution of the same concentration. So we get way more H plus ions from the HCl. So that's gonna be our lowest pH. HCl is gonna be lowest and then HF will be next. Now these two remaining chemicals are both bases. Um, NaOH is a base because it ends with hydroxide, and ammonia is our classic example of a weak base. Um, NaOH being a group one hydroxide is on that short list of strong bases. So now let's think about this for a moment. Strong bases prefer to ionize completely. So when you put NaOH in water, you no longer have NaOH. Instead, you have sodium ions and hydroxide ions. So we get the maximum possible amount of hydroxide ions out of this one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that at the top of our list. NaOH is gonna have the highest pH. Then my calculatus eliminatus, that's gonna leave ammonia is the next to highest because it is a weak base, and weak bases prefer to stay in that NH3 form instead of reacting with water and liberating some hydroxide ions. So we only get like one to 3% of them actually creating hydroxide. The other 97 to 99% stay as NH3. So bottom line, answer D is the best choice for this problem. When we compare these two solutions, we are looking for which one has the higher pH. So um, since they're both bases, the higher pH will be the one with more hydroxide ion present, greater concentration of hydroxide ion. So let's think about what happens with these two bases. If you look at the list of strong bases, both sodium hydroxide and barium hydroxide are on the list of strong bases. So that means that they ionize completely. So with sodium hydroxide, when that hits water, we get complete ionization to sodium ions and hydroxide ions. With barium hydroxide, we'll get complete dissociation to Ba plus two ions plus two hydroxide ions. So notice that with barium hydroxide, we get two hydroxides, whereas with sodium hydroxide, we're only gonna get a single hydroxide ion. So we're gonna get twice as much hydroxide from barium hydroxide as we do from sodium hydroxide. And so that will make barium hydroxide have a higher pH than sodium hydroxide. Just as an analogy, perhaps, for helping you to think about this, um, let's say that reaction A is represented by analogy with the idea that we're gonna take a car apart, and when we take that car apart, we're gonna get one steering wheel out of that car. Whoops, can't spell steering very well. But in reaction B, if we're gonna take that car apart we're going to get two windshield wipers. So that subscript of two on the hydroxide is like saying we've got two windshield wipers. So when that molecule falls apart, actually it's not a molecule, when that ionic compound's formula unit falls apart, we're going to get two hydroxide uh, ions. Um, but in the case of sodium hydroxide, where there's only one hydroxide, when it dissociates, we get just one. So our objective here was to describe the pH scale, and we even looked at some qualitative cases of ranking solutions from lowest to highest pH.